Cal State Fullerton's The Report, news, views, and info to go. I'm Valerie Shepperman. I'm Sarah Fenton. And I'm Tucker Tashin. The Student Succession Initiative fee proposal passes but with a major change. And another change to the school is happening, but it's not taking place on this campus. Find out what's going on at the Irvine campus later. The commencement speakers have been announced. <clears throat> Find out who's speaking at this year's graduation ceremonies, as well as other school updates. Fluctuating weather and an earthquake? We take a look at what's been happening with our local forecast in a bit, but first... The battle over the proposed student fee may have come to a close. Following a meeting with students, the student fee, the student fee advisory committee voted to approve the student fee increase, but with a change. With the input of student opinions, the fee will now lower from the originally proposed $240 to $181. Among opinions, two suggestions stood out more than others one focusing on improving student advising, and the second to focus on athletic programs. If the fee is approved, it will be phased over the next three years. The proposal needs to be approved by Mildred Garcia and then have the final approval by Chancellor Timothy P. White. On campus, there is a land where warriors battle each other in healthy competition. The land is named Moria, but we know it as a student recreation lawn right in front of the Student Recreation Center. Moria plays home to the members of the Fullerton Foam Fighters Club. The club makes sure that their members are not just randomly swinging their weapons around. They have set matches regulated by the club's set of rules. Each member is also protected with their own unique armor, which can range from gloves and knee pads to full leather vests. The club is free to join. Cal State Fullerton has a very special guest. TV personality and famed scientist Bill Nye the Science Guy leads a symposium about the relevance of science and technology and not just the lives of academics, but the immediacy of furthering energy efficiency and space technologies for all citizens alike. Inspiring space enthusiasts and all, of all ages, Bill Nye continues to engage his audience in building a better future at the well-attended symposium, Explorations in Citizen Science. I wanted to welcome you all to the 11th annual Natural Sciences and Mathematics Interclub Council Explorations in Citizen Science Symposium. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, uh, and I want you to give a warm CSUF welcome to Mr. Bill Nye, the science guy. Nicely done, looking sharp. Fabulous, greetings, greetings. I would like to talk tonight uh, about our place in the cosmos, your place in space, and having a planetary perspective. Having a planetary perspective allows you to think about our place in space, our place in the cosmos differently from any generation before you. The whole world is made of material that came from exploding stars. And so you and I, every, every one of us, is part of the universe. If we invested in California schools, you guys would have an easier time and we would have more of you. So I'm working on it. I would strongly advise you to take out whatever loan you got to take out because it will pay off. It will pay off. Now, it's an extraordinarily complicated problem. But when we raise the standard of living of women and girls, the children who are, there are fewer children born and they are more, or they receive more, if for lack of a better word, more love, more resources, and they are more successful. I claim that science is the best idea humans have ever had. So if you only have guys doing science, you're cutting out half the brains, for crying out loud. So every single thing every one of us does affects the climate of the whole planet because we all share the air. Meanwhile, as you may know, we have a not insignificant portion of our population which is living in denial about this. So this tiny change in the amount of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere is causing the world's climates to change. And that is the challenge I want you to take on. I want you to, dare I say it, change the world. <laughs> the key to the future is not just to do less, but to do more with less. And that's where I want you all to, dare I say it, change the world. What could you give us kind of as a rule of thumb so that we can keep in our minds as we progress through 
college and the rest of our lives. Two things. Every person's responsible for his or her own actions. All right? And the other thing is do all you can to leave the world better than you found it. And the key to our future, my friends, here in the United States, is not to make things as such. It's to innovate, to make things in new ways, to come up with new ways of doing things. But with your brain, you can imagine all of that. With your brain, you can know the cosmos. You can know your place within it. You can know your place in space. With your brains, you can, dare I say it, change the world. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Oh, I love you guys. Oh, you guys. The anthropology department is fighting for an overhaul. The staff have agreed on a proposal to divide the major into three divisions. These divisions will focus on cultural anthropology, archaeology, and evolutionary anthropology. The department currently has 15 tenure staff members who are all in support for the decision. If approved, the proposal will revive the anthropology department's graduate program in the 2014 fall semester. One of Mexico's most beloved and respected artists, Frida Kahlo, is currently the heart of a West Coast exhibit featuring many of her works. The exhibit, titled Frida Kahlo, Her Photos, is presented by the Museum of Latin American Art in celebration of Women's History Month. Visitors can view over 200 of the artist's photographs from her personal Casa Azul archive. The images range from traditional portraits to family photos. The exhibit will run from March 16th through June 8th. For more information, please visit MOLAA.com. More often than not, there are children who go neglected, orphaned, or disadvantaged. The Memory Project works to make sure such children go remembered and thought about. They do so by delivering portraits to the children from artists who have received their photos. Credential students at Cal State Fullerton recently partook in an art project for the children. Ginger Jeff Takis, program coordinator of the college's school's first federal credit union center for creativity and critical thinking, guided the students through the art process. So far, the Memory Project has delivered over 50,000 portraits to kids in 34 countries. For more information on how to participate, visit memoryproject.org. Legally Blonde, the musical, is finally here at CSUF. The popular musical is produced in the Little Theater of the Clay's Performing Arts Center. Based on the book and film of the same name, the play follows Elle Woods, a sorority girl who enrolls at Harvard Law University to win back her ex-boyfriend. She comes to realize that her law skills can be used to help others and defends a beauty queen in a murder trial. The show runs from March 28th to April 20th, and tickets are sold at $22. The Supplemental Instruction Program has received about $4,500,000 in funding. Campus leaders are ecstatic as SI helps students succeed through their bottleneck and gateway courses. The program advocates flipped classrooms in peer-led teams learning as helpful approaches towards graduations. Thanks to the funding, SI now has a full-time coordinator who can oversee administrative duties. SI is now centralized in the University Learning Center instead of being in colleges or departments. Spring is here, but in SoCal it feels like summer already. Global warming advances as scientists strive to create better climate models that more accurately predict the changing conditions. Recent reports have given an indication on just how much the climate has changed. We have the story. The shifting state of weather is nothing new for our planet Earth, but more and more extremities continue to devastate. Charles D. Keeling discovered in 1957 the now penned Keeling Curve, which depicts exponentially rising levels of CO2 in the atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution. The discovery is the result of carbon dating, centuries-old core samples taken from the Earth, and the atmospheric percentages of CO2 and other greenhouse gases within, forever encapsulated in tiny air pockets frozen in the ice. According to the National Climatic Data Center, California had its warmest and third driest winter on record. Despite late season storms, the state is also experiencing severe drought. 
According to a March 4th U.S. Drought Monitor report, 35.9% of the contiguous U.S. was in a drought. Even the coldest of states experienced an extreme. Alaska had its eighth warmest winter on record. Studies predict which regions lose precipitation due to climate shifts. Research anticipates that, due to shifts in global winds, a good solid portion of the tropical regions could lose nearly a month of rainfall. And it's not just tropical regions affected. Conversely, the East Coast had experienced a very cold winter. The persistent cold during this winter caused 91% of the Great Lakes to be frozen by early March, the second largest ice over on record. The winter also brought on snow to the Midwest, with Michigan clocking in its heaviest snowfall on record. Continuing from the NOAA's data, the average U.S. temperature during February was 32.2 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 1.6 degrees Fahrenheit below average. Scientists and physicists are working together on the planet's polar regions to determine a pattern in the melting of the planet's ice caps. The collaboration is meant to delineate if the melting of the sea ice is at a point of no return. Ed Royce has hosted the Women's Conference since 2008. The conference advocates for the financial, health, and social growth of women within the district. The conferences have had an array of strong female keynote speakers in the past, including actress Kristen Bell, television personality Lisa Ling, and eBay CEO Meg Whitman. This year's event showcases keynote speaker Angie Harmon. Harmon is most recognizable for her role as Jane Rizzoli at TNT's Rizzoli and Isles. She is also an ambassador for UNICEF and fights human trafficking. She joins others in speaking about cyber safety, financial responsibility, and lifestyle issues. The chairman of U.S. Bancorp, Richard K. Davis, will be awarded an honorary doctorate of humane letters during the May 17th commencement ceremonies at Cal State Fullerton. Davis graduated from CSUF in 1983 with a degree in economics. He now leads a financial services company with more than $361 billion in total assets and business across the country. In 2008, Davis was honored with the Distinguished Alumni Award. In 2010, he helped establish the U.S. Bank Economic Empowerment Program. The Vice President for Student Affairs, Verancia Johnson Eanes, will be awarded a 2014 Women of Distinction Award for the 65th Annual State Assembly District. Before joining the CSUF team, Johnson Eanes worked as Vice President of Student Affairs at John Jay College of Criminal Justice in New York. She also helped co-author more than $4 million in grants for various initiatives that focus on student development. Johnson Eanes will be recognized on March 29th. Congresswoman Loretta Sanchez will speak at this year's commitment ceremonies. Sanchez serves as a House of Representative for the 46th Congressional District, which includes cities like Anaheim and Santa Ana. This will be her second time as a commencement speaker, as she previously spoke in the graduating class of, 2000, of 1997. Sanchez will speak during the May 18th commencement ceremonies. It's one thing for a geology student to study in a classroom, but for them to truly be immersed in their studies, they need to venture into nature itself. That's what Assistant Professor Nicole Bonuso is doing at the end of March. Bonuso is leading a group of 40 students from her Earth History class to the Grand Canyon, where she hopes they will not only get hands-on geological experience, but also foster camaraderie amongst the classmates. The trip's finances are mostly covered by the school's instructionally related activities fee at a price of $36 a semester. Once there, the students will hike 25 miles and examine the 3.8 million years worth of history that can be found at the site. Sewer Gators, the Chupacabra, Slender Man, urban legends are great fun and as such should provide a gallery full of artwork. The Begovich Gallery is doing just that. From March 29th to May 8th, the gallery will host Hearsay, Artists Reveal Urban Legends. The exhibit will feature artwork based on urban legends. Also featured will be essays by the curators, full color images of the artwork, and artist statements will be available at the reception on April 12th. The opening reception will be held from 5 to 8 p.m. on the 12th. It will be free and open to the public. The Begovich is located in CSUF's Visual Arts Center and is open from noon to 4 on Monday through Thursday and noon to 2 on Saturdays. 
According to a recent university police report, bite thefts are down from what they used to be in 2012. In 2013, only 69 incidents were reported as opposed to the whopping high of 125 reports. However, 2013's report is still double that of 2009's, where there was only 32 accounts of theft. Campus police urge students to make sure their bikes are secured when leaving them on campus. Stolen bikes that are recovered can only be returned if the owner is a bike registered with the university police. Students can register their bike by taking them to the university police station or the Housing Community Resource Center. Three men and one woman were hospitalized on the 16th after being stabbed at a downtown bar. The Continental Bar bills itself as being Fullerton's oldest drinking establishment. No names have been made available, but one person was detained by police. According to officials, there was no indication of gang violence. Witnesses were too intoxicated to give proper accounts, making the investigation still open. Bullying can affect anyone, and CSUF Circle K International hopes to raise awareness. Led by Linda Hoang, the group plans to raise awareness by having events in the quad where students can write down experiences on a whiteboard. The event will take place on March 28th. The group will also be hosting a seminar in the Titan Student Union where various speakers will discuss their experiences and how they have dealt with being bullied. Circle K International will be handing out bracelets for International Stand Up to Bullying Day, which takes place on the final Friday of each month. CSUF Auxiliary Service Corp. purchased a two-building complex in Irvine last August. The purchase was made in order to expand the Irvine campus. Recently, at CSUF Focus Group has held meeting to discuss plans for the future expansion. Details include what equipment and supplies to send to the new buildings. The move was made to better accommodate students who have to commute from their homes to the Fullerton campus by providing more opportunities at the Irvine location. There will be a final focus group on March 26th at the Irvine campus in room 245 at 5 p.m. Five mechanical engineering students are developing a new hands-free crutch. The students are expected to go from modeling to a working, usable product in just a few months. The crutches are used by people with ankle injuries, most of whom would be athletes. The team has already used motion capture technology in order to research human leg motion. Their main goal is to come up with the natural trajectory of the ankle. With the budget of $4,500, the students try to keep within budget. When they assemble their final product, it will go into test phasing. According to a recent survey by the California Department of Transportation, the rate of Californians using alternative transportation doubled to 22% over a 10-year span starting in 2001. From 2010 to 2012, researchers asked 110,000 people to record the duration and distance of every trip they took during a random day. This includes using transportation via personally owned vehicles or alternative modes of transportation. These alternative modes of transportation include walking, biking, or taking transits. The, group, the growth in these alternative modes also mirrors a nationwide decline in driving, according to the study. Sidney Abbott, part-time health science professor at CSUF, competed in Alaska's Iditarod mid-course. The Iditarod, also known as the last great race on Earth, is a 1,000 mile race that begins in Anchorage and finishes in Nome, located in the western Bering Sea coast. Mushers from all walks of life and their team of sled dogs are challenged every step of the way through some of the most beautiful and treacherous terrain Alaska has to offer. Abbott raced proudly in the first 175 miles of the race, but did not finish. She hit the SOS button on her GPS trackers, forfeiting her from the race. March 17th's earthquake took everyone by surprise and for a good reason. The reported 4.4 earthquake was the biggest to hit since the 5.5 quake in Chino Hills in 2008. A quake of this magnitude should come annually, but that hasn't happened in years. The quake, along with its seven tremors, all occurred about five to six miles northwest of Westwood. Corky Nepomneko, a Fullerton resident, may not come from the city, but she does love it as if it were her hometown. Napa Moneco is an owner to a website that puts Fullerton in the spotlight. Titled The Fullerton Foundry, the website shares info on the food, culture, and events that can be found within the city. Napa Moneco never quite felt at home until she moved to Fullerton with her daughter. Through the city she fell in love with, she founded the website. Now, some are even calling it a mini bureau of tourism. The site offers an event and restaurant guide, but also some do-it-yourself instructions and recipes. A CSUF student is garnering much attention for her YouTube account. Beauty guru Eva Gutowski has gained over a quarter million subscribers on YouTube. This achievement has caught the attention of an executive producer from Seventeen Magazine. The magazine has offered her a position on their daily online program. 
Gutowski is a broadcast journalism major and finds the opportunity her calling. Her advice videos can be found on her YouTube channel, My Life as Eva. Time Magazine is an esteemed publication that constantly delivers quality articles and interviews. So it comes as a surprise to find that they recently put out a selfie ranking of the world. According to their rankings, the Anaheim Santa Ana area has been ranked the number four selfiest place in the world. The rankings were done by Time using their database of more than 400,000 Instagram photos tagged selfie. Examining over 459 cities around the world, the number one selfie taking city in the world is Makati City in the Philippines. Well, that does it for this week's episode of The Report. Join us next week for more up-to-date news, views, and info to go. I'm Valerie Strapperman. I'm Sarah Fenton. And I'm Tucker Tashton. Stay fresh, Fullerton.